The Global Gender Gap Report is an annual study that covers over 130 countries. What the report seeks to do is really come up with an objective measure to try to understand what the size of the gender gap is. Zero meaning inequality and one meaning perfect equality and countries are really able to track their progress over time. The Global Gender Gap Index has four sub-indices, health and survival, educational attainment, economic participation opportunity, and political empowerment. The countries towards the bottom of the rankings haven't made the investments in terms of health and education and consequently haven't seen the results in terms of economic participation and political empowerment. You've got countries such as Japan, you've got countries such as the Gulf countries in the Arab world that have made the investments in women's health and education but then haven't removed the barriers to women's economic participation or women's political empowerment and essentially are not reaping the rewards of that initial investment. The third set of countries towards the very top of the rankings, one half of their uh, human capital um, is being used in a far more efficient way than, than other countries in the rankings. We have a combination of the efficiency argument, which is your, 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 your economies will be more efficient. You know, and then you've got the equity argument, which is, hey, it's just fair. Once the policymakers are determined to implement these policies, there are going to be great social changes, as happened in China. And that's what we're talking about, the future of economic development. You know, change is a funny thing. It goes from the unthinkable to the impossible to the inevitable. But you just got to make your way through that. <laughs>